The July 2024 content has been revealed for Pokemon Go, and in this video I will be going through everything that you need to know for the month, and I'll be going through some tips including which of the raid bosses are worth focusing on. So starting with the 5 star raids for the month, we have Ho-Oh up until July 8th at 10am, and it will have a raid hour on the 3rd. Then from July 8th to the 9th will be Guzzlord, and it will have a raid hour on the 8th. From the 9th to the 10th will be Nihiligo, which will also have a raid hour on the 9th. From the 10th to the 11th will be Celesteela and Cartona in their respective regions. They will both have raid hours on the 10th. From the 11th to the 12th will be Stack Attacker and Blacephalon in their respective regions, and these two will also have raid hours on the 11th. From the 12th to the 15th will be Buzzwall, Feromosa and Zerkatry all in their respective regions, and they will have a raid hour on the 12th. From the 15th to the 23rd will be Articuno, which will have a raid hour on the 17th, and lastly Tornadus in its incarnate form will be available from July 23rd until August 3rd. This Pokemon will have two raid hours, one on the 24th and one on the 31st. It's also worth noting that on day one of of Global Go Fest on July 13th, you will be able to raid all of these Ultra Beasts globally. And on day 2 of Global Go Fest on July 14th, you will be able to raid Duskmane and Dawnwing's Necrozma for an encounter with Necrozma. In Mega Raids for the month will be Mega Tyranitar up until July 8th, and then Mega Swampert will take over until the 23rd. Following this will be Mega Agron from July 23rd up until the 3rd of August. And in 5 star Shadow Raids for the month will be Shadow Entei on Saturdays and Sundays only. I will be going through how good each of these raid bosses are later on in the video video so stay tuned for that. So that is it for the raids, moving on to the events, we have the 8th anniversary party event running up until July 6th, then from the 6th to the 9th will be the aquatic paradise event, from the 8th to the 13th will be the inbound from ultra space event, which will include all of the different ultra beast raids running from the 8th to the 13th that I mentioned previously, and the bonuses for the event will be increased remote raid limit up to 20 for July 8th to the 11th, and there'll be no remote raid limit from July 12th to the 14th. You will also get guaranteed XL candy for trading Pokemon from July 8th at 10am until July 14th at 11.59pm. There will be a timed research that will get you encounters with Nihiligo, Buzzwall, Feromosa, Zerkatry, Celesteela, Cartona, Guzzlord, Stack Attacker and Bacephalon. Also for this event the new Pokemon backgrounds will be debuting. You will have a chance to receive a special background from all raid battles in a similar way to the location backgrounds that you get from in-person go fests. There will be a global challenge and when completed this will allow all trainers to use beast balls to catch Ultra Beasts during Global Go Fest. This will also unlock faster charging party power up until July 13th at 10am. There will also be the option to purchase an inbound from Ultra Space ticket for $5 that will get you an extra 5000 XP from raids, 2 times Stardust for winning Ultra Beast raids, 1 additional Candy and Candy XL from catching Pokemon from 5 star raids, and you'll get up to 2 free raid passes from spinning gyms. This timed research will also include 10 Cosmog Candy and 5 XL Candy for all of these Ultra Beasts. You will also get 2024 20, Stardust and one Star Piece, and there'll be some bundles on the web store. So following this event will be the Pokemon Go Fest global event from the 13th to the 14th, and I will have a tips video for this event up on the channel soon, so keep an eye out for that. Next will be the Ultra Unlock Part 1 Better Together event from July 17th to the 22nd. On July 21st will be Tynamo Community Day, and the details are as follows. Tynamo will be appearing more frequently in the wild, and it will have a boosted shiny rate. The bonuses for the event will be quarter to hatch distance, 2 times catch candy, 2 times chance for candy XL, 3 hour lures and incense, you'll get 5 snapshot photobomb encounters with Tynamo, you'll also get 1 extra special trade and all trades made will require 50% less stardust. You can evolve an electric between 2pm and 10pm to get an electros that knows the electric type fast attack vault switch. There will be 4 star in person electric raids taking place between 5pm and 10pm and upon completion Tynamo will spawn around the host gym for 30 minutes and they will have the same boosted community day shiny rates. There will be event themed field research rewarding Tynamo encounters, Stardust, Great Balls and more. You will also get a free timed research rewarding Universe Stones that you can use to evolve Electric into Electros. Community day themed showcases will also be taking place and there will be a $1 special research in the shop alongside some bundles. There will also be some event themed stickers available from spinning Pokestops, opening gifts and for purchase in the in-game shop. So following this event from the 25th to the 30th will be the Ultra Unlock Part 2 Strength of Steel event, and during this event on the 27th will be the Ultra Unlock Part 3 Mega Raid Day. And with this raid day being during a Steel type event, hopefully it's the debut of Mega Morwile, Lucario or Metagross, but there are no announcements on which Pokemon will feature yet. So these are all the events for the month. For the Spotlight Hours which take place every Tuesday between 6pm and 7pm local time, we will have Cake Hat Pikachu on July 2nd with 2 times Catch XP, Sphiel will be featuring on the 9th with 2 times Catch Candy, on the 16th will be Binnacle with 2 times 
Transfer Candy. On the 23rd will be both Diglett with 2x Evolution XP, and lastly on the 30th will be Toga Damaru with 2x Catch Stardust. So these are all the details for July, but how good are each of the raid bosses? So starting with the 5 star raid bosses, Ho-Oh is a good one to raid because it is currently ranked 16 in the Master League and it is a strong fire type raid attacker as well. Guzzlord has some relevance in Go Battle League where it is currently ranked 38 in the Great League with 113 2 IVs and it is ranked 21 in the Ultra League with 115 15 IVs. Nihiligo could be worth raiding because it is a top 5 poison type raid attacker and a top 10 rock type attacker. It is also ranked 86 in the Master League so it does see some play there too. Celesteela doesn't have much meta relevance so unless you're shiny hunting it you could skip this one. Cortana however does have relevance, it is the second best overall grass type attacker just behind Mega Sceptile. Similar to Celesteela, Stack Attacker doesn't really have much meta relevance so it can be skipped especially as the shiny isn't available yet. Blacephalon however is one of the best non-mega non-shadow fire type attackers in the game and is a top 10 ghost type attacker overall. Buzzwall will also be available and its shiny will be released globally for the first time so a good one to shiny hunt but also it is strong in go battle league where it is currently ranked 57 in the ultra league with 114 12 ivs and it is ranked 51 in the master league Feramosa will also be getting its global shiny release and whilst not meta relevant in go battle league it is a top bug type attacker and in terms of dps it's the best bug type attacker like the two previously mentioned zirkatree will also be getting a global shiny release as well and it is a great pokemon to raid because it is the second best electric type raid attacker in the game and more accessible than shadow raikou because shadow raids are in person only. Articuno will be returning in July and whilst not very meta relevant in its regular form, it is a decent ice type attacker in its shadow form, but not a high priority to raid unless you're shiny hunting it. Incarnate Tornadus doesn't have any meta relevance, but again it is worth raiding if you're going after the shiny or you need it for the decks. Duskmane and Dawnwing's Necrozma are worth raiding for a few reasons. So the Duskmane version of Necrozma is a top steel type attacker and it is ranked 15 in the Master League and the Dawnwing's form is ranked even higher at number 7 in the Master League. For Mega Raids, Mega Tyranitar is a strong Mega with it being the best Dark type attacker in the game and a top Rock type raid attacker as well. Tyranitar is also ranked 101 in the Master League. Likewise, Mega Swamper is a great use of raid passes if you haven't Mega Evolved one before because it is the second best overall water and ground type attacker in the game. Swamper itself is also strong in Go Battle League where it is currently ranked 14 in the Great League with 0 14 14 IVs. It's ranked 17 in the Ultra League with 0 14 13 IVs and it is ranked 45 in the Master League. So overall, a great choice of Pokemon to go after. Mega Agron, however, isn't as meta relevant, but it is a top 10 Steel type attacker and it's worth going after if you haven't got access to another Steel type Mega. And lastly, Shadow Entei could be worth raiding if you can, because it is a top 10 Fire type raid attacker. Remember, if you are going to be raiding it, to use eight Purified Gems to subdue it when it becomes enraged to make it easier to take down. You can get Purified Gems by combining four Shadow Shards that you get from Team Go Rocket Grunts, Leaders, Giovanni and Shadow Raids. And with that said, if you do want to know what are the best Pokemon to power up in Pokemon Go for both raid attacking and go battle league, then I recommend checking out this video next.